I'd like to thank the uh, Seattle Science Foundation and Dr. Drazen uh, for inviting me here. Um, I uh, am actually kind of the odd guy out here. I uh, uh, do almost nothing MIS um, except for maybe decompressions. Um, I do, um, once in a while I'll use uh, computer navigation for placement of uh, spinal instrumentation. Uh, but uh, I really kind of fell upon uh, the augmented reality in, in spine navigation through one of our residents who formed a, a uh, uh, relationship with one of the uh, companies, uh, Augmetics, that was developing uh, this technology. And um, I ended up uh, working on uh, one of the cadavers, cadaver labs, which was a, a proof of concept for this technology. And um, I sort of uh, fell into it that way, and I'm, I'm sort of hooked on it uh, at this point. Now, it's not FDA approved yet in the US, um, but I am conflicted on this. Um, again, when I did the original study, I was not. Um, but uh, I do uh, have an interest in this technology and do uh, have a conflict of interest. Now, we've heard some great talks today and have seen some great demonstrations so far. I mean, I, it's really incredible work. Um, looking at uh, both neuronavigation uh, and robotics. And I think with both of these uh, technologies and applications, uh, obviously this makes our lives a lot easier, but it's not perfect yet. And so I think there's still some work to be done, and I think that augmented reality could uh, help fill part of that gap. Uh, you can see here in both images with the, with the navigation and with the robotics, there's this attention shift that takes place. We have to look away from the patient. You know, we're not really accustomed to doing that as, as surgeons, uh, at least starting out, uh, until you sort of get used to the learning curve for this. But you know, the focus is on the patient, but yet we're looking away at a, at a computer screen. And so um, there are uh, uh, some ways to, to get around that, and one of those is with a heads-mounted uh, heads uh, display system, and that's what I'm going to talk a little bit about. Now, augmented reality is a technology that uh, superimposes a computer-generated image on the user's view of the real world. Thus, it provides a composite view or an augmented view. Um, there are uh, drawbacks to uh, navigation, uh, as I mentioned, a line of sight interruption. Uh, we constantly have to be aware of the fact that the camera is in between where we're working and we can't disrupt that line of sight. Uh, there is a learning curve, which I think was demonstrated well in uh, some of the earlier talks today. Uh, you have to replicate all of the inline maneuvers when placing instrumentation from the point of making your pilot hole to cannulating the pedicle to uh, tapping and then subsequently placing the screw. We know that that entry point can shift or there can be skiving. We see that commonly with the robotic technologies. Uh, and then this concept of a, a tension shift, which is a big one. And there are studies that have shown that attention shift can uh, result in a decline in both cognitive tasks and motor tasks. So what could be an augmented reality uh, solution in spine surgery? Well, we could, we could have a uh, microscope-mediated heads-up display, and I'll show some work in that area. Um, that sort of limits you in terms of instrumentation placement, but certainly for some uh, indications in spine surgery, that could be very helpful. You could still have this concept of a, a remote screen image overlay uh, and still place an image on the real world. But again, you're, there's still the attention shift and you have to look away from the patient in this particular system. And then the concept of heads, heads up or head mounted uh, display. So just looking at the uh, uh, heads-up display with a microscope, a microscope uh, assisted surgery, uh, this has been done, work has been nicely done by Dr. Carl and her group, group in Germany. And they've used this technology, this is with the Brain Lab system, and you can see that what they do in this system is a different, in addition to having a reference frame, the, the uh, microscope itself is actually tracked and is actually a part of the field. And then this allows for the overlay of images uh, right onto the real world view. In this case, uh, removal of a intradural uh, tumor. Uh, they can overlay the bony structures and then also have an outline of the tumor itself. 
And work like this has actually been done uh, for a while uh, in brain surgery. Um, it does have the downside uh, for the actual tumor resection itself, um, and that is uh, that there can be shift of structures after you've removed uh, some of the tumor. But nonetheless, a very uh, interesting and neat uh, application of augmented uh, reality. And then this is the uh, remote screen overlay. This is a, a flat screen uh, C-arm uh, image intensifier, which has the camera built into the, the actual C-arm itself. And so a group uh, out of um, Karolinska in Sweden and, and Netherlands, uh, they've uh, used this technology in both uh, uh, cadaveric uh, studies, uh, including this one, uh, and also uh, they, they have some newer data that's come out and uh, used uh, in human use. But the concept is uh, registration through the C-arm itself with the camera embedded in the C-arm, so um, it's immediately on the, on the patient at all times, and there isn't as much of an issue with the um, line of sight interruption. But again, you, you still have to look away from the patient to see the, the display, which is uh, mounted uh, on the screen uh, neighboring the, uh, the C-arm. And they've done a cadaveric study where they've shown uh, reasonably uh, uh, good accuracy. They've also done some studies in humans um, looking at the augmented reality screw placement. They had about an 85% accuracy. The freehand was pretty low, I think, uh, compared to many of the studies. But uh, nonetheless, they did show a statistical difference in use of the augmented uh, reality system. Um, this is the X-Vision, um, and this is the uh, head-mounted uh, augmented reality system for navigation of spinal instrumentation placement uh, developed by Augmetics. And what's different with this particular technology, there are some other uh, you know, head-mounted augmented reality cameras, but this uh, system includes uh, the actual navigation system with inside of it. And there is a camera, and the way this works is as a uh, 3D CT um, or, excuse me, a CT or a 3D uh, fluoro is taken inside the operating room. We don't yet have capability for uh, preoperative CT, but that's something that is being worked on. Um, so the CT is, or uh, fluoro is performed. Uh, registration is then done on a tablet or a uh, computer inside of the operating room, which then establishes a HIPAA-compliant um, Wi-Fi, which sends the uh, segmented registered data uh, via Wi-Fi to this headset. And now this becomes your navigation system. And this system then can directly superimpose the augmented reality pictures directly on your retina through looking through this, uh, through this head-mounted uh, uh, device. And so this is sort of what the surgeon sees right here. You have a 3D reconstructed image of the spine, which you can see, uh, the surface anatomy, and then, of course, your normal um, sagittal and axial images uh, that can be used for navigation. And the difference here is that you're looking directly at the patient when you're using this um, technology. You don't have to look away from the patient. And so you can even look directly at the structures uh, if you're doing it open. Uh, or this uh, is uh, quite adaptable for percutaneous use uh, as well. Um, and there's a newer cadaveric study which is coming out on the percutaneous use of it. Um, the uh, reference frame is typically mounted uh, via the spinous processes. I think uh, one of the earlier speakers talked about being uh, 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 system agnostic. This is a system agnostic device. In other words, um, this can be used with any type of spinal instrumentation, uh, and these reference tools can be attached to any, uh, any type of spinal instrumentation, uh, you know, whether it's Medtronic or Synthes or Nuvasiv or uh, wh whichever one you choose to use. So I had a chance to uh, be involved in this uh, cadaveric study uh, as a proof of concept of this uh, technology. Um, myself and my colleagues, we uh, operated on five cadaveric torsos. A registration clamp was placed at L3. There was CT acquisition of uh, post-clamp placement uh, data. 
Uh, and then we instrumented the spine, so essentially 24 screws were placed on each cadaver from T6 to L5 for a total of 120 pedicle screws. And this is an example of the reconstructed uh, 3D image after uh, scanning and registration. Uh, there were, you know, you could use any of the types of tools that you would ordinarily use for placing spinal instrumentation, whichever you're comfortable with. In this case, you could use an all pedicle finder, a uh, manual screwdriver if you like to use power. That's, this system is adaptable to whatever type of tool you'd like to use. And this is just an example, again, of what the, what the user will see when they're, when they're doing this procedure. And so we use the Gertzbein uh, system and also the HERI, uh, a modification of the HERI system uh, to grade screw placement. And we looked at our accuracy rates uh, using both of these scales uh, with the HERI scale in the thoracic spine. Uh, it ranged from surgeon to surgeon with a 92.9% .9 accuracy to 100% for an average of 97. For lumbar with the HERI, 90 range to 100, and then the total average for the HERI system for thoraca lumbar was 96.6% with this uh, device in our initial study. Looking at the GERD spine system uh, grading scale, uh, the range was 88.9% to 100% thoracic average, 93.5, and then ranging in the lumbar from 90 to 100, and the average with that uh, scale for thoracic, uh, thoracic and lumbar was uh, 94.6. So then what we did is we tried to compare this to uh, basically what is reported in the literature for other similar technologies uh, or, and including freehand placement, but also navigated uh, placement of screws basically looking at meta-analyses or averages reported in the literature, and then also robotic uh, placement. And so if, uh, if you look here, it's a little bit confusing. I'm not a statistician, but I'll try to go through this. Uh, we looked at both the Gertzbein scale and the HERI grading scale, and we're looking at the lower uh, one-tailed 95% uh, confidence, uh, one-sided confidence limit. Um, to compare to the different other modalities. So we used a, uh, a reference control percentage. So for freehand report in the literature, it's about 89%. That's a little, probably a little on the high side. Reference control in the literature for um, a navigated uh, screw placement is probably about 966 uh, And then for robotic uh, navigated placement, about 92.3%. And so if we go back here and we look at the, with the GERD spine system, comparing our system. Now, the way the statistics worked in this analysis is, if you were greater than negative 10%, then you were non-inferior. So basically, for all of these modalities using the GERD spine and the HERI grading system, we are non-inferior to both manual navigated, freehand, and robotic placement. Now, if you're greater than zero, then that's considered to be superior. So uh, with the exception of navigated uh, and the, the um, Gertzbein for robotic placement, we were superior to the freehand with both scales and superior to the uh, robotic navigated uh, placement for the, um, for the uh, HERI scale. We looked at the, um, there was a questionnaire about usability that each surgeon took at the end of it. It was 26 questions. Interestingly, I mean, the thing that, this was my first exposure to this technology using this uh, system, uh, and the novelty of it is, is, you know, that's what really catches your eye. Um, at first, you know, before you sort of begin to understand how accurate it is, um, the depend dependability is a little bit lower, but still scoring in the excellent range. Basically, all of these uh, properties, when we asked the surgeons afterwards, it, it landed in the excellent range. So this has been, uh, this is an uh, Israeli company that's moving to the U.S., Augmetics, and uh, so the initial clinical trials have been done in Israel. Um, and these are just uh, some of their initial cases in L4 to S1 fusion with 100% accuracy. Uh, similar case, four to one, I'll go through this quickly. 
Um, this is an L3-4 uh, again. And they've done, uh, in their um, trial, they've done, I think, nine cases over there. They've been submitted to their uh, equivalent of the FDA. So finishing up, the uh, head-mounted display, uh, I think, sort of represents a natural progression uh, where we stand in spinal navigation. Um, it certainly is a solution or a potential solution to the um, attention shift that has to take place with the typical navigation systems that we have now. <clears throat> it is very accurate to the one or two millimeter uh, accuracy for sure. And the learning curve is very, very steep. It was easy to pick up on. Um, it's also going to come in priced quite a bit lower than the traditional navigation systems. I don't know all the details of that, but, but uh, that's, that's what I'm told. So uh, what's next? Uh, we can use this in the cervical spine as well. We've done uh, some initial ca uh, cadaver work in the cervical spine. <coughs> Excuse me, here placing C1 and C2 screws uh, very, very seamlessly. Uh, whoops. Again, in uh, Israel, there have been nine cases uh, completed. Uh, they're submitting that uh, for review. In the U.S., um, it is uh, hopefully soon to be FDA approved, uh, very soon here. There was some initial or additional data that had to be submitted for um, percutaneous use. Um, so that should be coming, uh, coming along very soon. You, getting things like a preoperative CT to line up with this, um, limiting the uh, weight of the headset, these are all things that I think are going to improve in the future. <coughs> this system could be integrated with other navigation uh, modalities, robotics, and I think it'll also help us plan other uh, applications in the spine like osteotomies and uh, more advanced uh, maneuvers other than instrumentation placement. I'd just like to thank my uh, collaborators here, um, the Carnegie Center for uh, Surgical Innovation at Hopkins, the Augmetics team, and then my collaborators at Hopkins. Thanks.